All right, this is video number 12 in this series, believe it or not, it's blowing me away. But uh, I was not happy with how these two hides turned out at all, and I want to redo them. But I want to discuss their history a little bit uh, because this provides like a good place to talk about something I've been trying to kind of drive home and talk about a lot. Uh, which is kind of like how the fibers dry and why we need to keep them broken open and, and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm going to do two different things with these two different hides. And we're going to learn like another new different way to, uh, to finish hides. Like the two major ways that I use to finish hides. Uh, one of which we've already done, which was to, you know, soften uh, like kind of like this, like very soft, supple hides. And the other one's going to be more of a flatter, stiffer kind of a leather. Okay, so... What happened with these? Um, the other two hides, I after they came out of the egg yolk and oil solution, I nailed them to the wall and I wanted them to dry kind of all stretched out. So with an open fiber structure and so they couldn't shrink in and get all like crinkled and weird, right? Now these two, I thought, well, let's just hang these two on the line and then when they're partially dry, I'll take them down and I'll start working them and try to finish them. But then I fell asleep in the middle of the afternoon, which I often do. And when I woke up, they were already drier than I wanted them to be. So I thought, well, these edges are pretty dry, but there's still a little moisture. Let's just fold them to the interior of the skin, which is much damper because it's thicker, right? The edges are thin, they dry fast. We'll roll it up like this, put it in a plastic bag in the fridge and let that moisture redistribute so the edges become damp again. Well, that worked, it just didn't work enough. So what happened is as these hung on the line and dried, they shrunk in like this, right? They pulled in and you can really see right here on this edge, look at these wrinkles and how they go like this way and watch how much this stretches. See that? Okay, well that's a problem because that stretch, if you make anything out of this hide, that stretch is gonna happen later, right? So basically, if I had taken those hides off the line that had dried too much and pulled in like this and thrown them back in the egg yolk solution or water and got them completely wet, all of that would be completely reversed and we'd be starting from point A again. And that's probably what I should have done, or at least I should have added more moisture than I did to allow the hides to, to really stretch back out. Because in spite of the fact that I worked this on the cable and the stake and kept pulling it and, you know, I worked it a lot, the fibers had already shrunk in and become too dry and too shrunken to get them to, to stretch back out. Fresh skin is like all rubbery and resilient. You know, if you sat and pulled on the same spot every day of your skin, you'd probably get like a, you know, it'd probably change or something. But basically it's extremely resilient. And that's what it's supposed to be like. So when the hide is full of water, it's kind of like that. And if I take a wet hide that's just completely sopping wet, and I try to work it and stretch it and work it, it's not gonna do anything because the skin fiber is in that state where it's super resilient. It's not drying. It's, you're not able to like, you know, pull the fibers apart and loosen them. It's only as the water leaves the skin that you can do that. And the trick is to work it enough from a wet enough state as it dries to get it to be soft but you can take breaks because like if it's at a certain moisture level you can work it a bunch but at some point you're getting diminishing returns you're not doing anything and you want to wait till more moisture leaves and then work it again so what happened with these is that they just shrunk in and dried too much and those fibers kind of set up that way and they just don't they just didn't want to come back and i couldn't get them stretched back out so i just wanted to explain that uh, because it, it might help you understand the whole process and the process of softening. It's like you let a little water leave, you have a window, you work the skin, get the fibers that are dry enough to get stretched and pulled apart and fluffed up and open done and then you let a little bit more water leave and you do the same thing over again so with this one i'm going to put it in some uh, egg yolks and water just because i have some old eggs um, sitting around but let's do that and then we'll talk about what we're going to do with this hide okay i have an egg separator here which is really cool check that out pretty neat these oh i wait these eggs are are pretty old um kind of mess that one up that's all right but as long as they don't smell like rotten i'm you know they're fine for tanning so but they don't look like something i'd want to eat that's for sure 
Now, I'm not gonna add any oil to this because again, the hides are probably fine the way they are, uh, or this hide. I just, I have these eggs and it's like, if I'm gonna soak the thing in water, I might as well soak it in an egg yolk solution and get some more lubrication in there. Now the egg yolks are not just an emulsifier, but they have, you know, oils and conditioners. Okay, this hide uh, just felt a little different from the start. It, it was always a little bit flatter, a little bit heavier, a little bit denser. So I decided, well, I'll just, uh, you know, kind of pull it a little bit, not work it on the cable, not try to get it really soft, but it just didn't turn out that good. Um, how I usually finish leather that I want to be kind of like flat and um, smooth maybe on this side sometimes, depending, uh, but just sort of, yeah, like not fluffed up, not softened, not stretched out, and as flat as I can get it, um, I slick it out to a board, and that's what we're gonna do uh, today. But I'm not gonna put it in the egg yolks, I'm just gonna put this in water. And then we're gonna go through a process of pasting this out and stretching it and smoothing it and flattening it uh, to this surface, and then we're gonna dry it slow. So let's get on that. First thing, soak that up. Some nice warm water here, it should soak up pretty quick. There's still some dry parts. So we'll just pull it over the stake a little bit to stretch those fibers open, make sure they take up as much water as they can, or in this case, egg yolk solution. Now I'm just gonna stake this out and uh, I'll go through that process and spare you guys watching me cable it all over again. I want to make sure I really get these edges especially opened out and wetted good because they were the problem, the fact that they'd shrunk in so much. Looks good. Okay, a few minutes soaking in there and I'll nail that out. How's this doing? Let's just go ahead and pull this over the staker. You can kind of see like how there's some light areas. Those haven't soaked up yet, but this will open those right up and allow that water to move in. Okay, back in the water. And again, I'm just gonna you know, knead it a little bit and then let the water do its work for a little while rather than fighting it. I think this one will be ready to nail out. So I'm gonna go do that, I'll come back and then we'll finish this one up. Now I'm not gonna scrape this out to try to get the, the stuff out of it or anything. I'm gonna leave the liquid in it. I'm just kinda wringing out some major excess here and I'll just nail it up like that. I uh, nailed this out to dry here, and uh, hopefully it'll dry slow. It's kind of a cloudy, cool day. It was actually uh, so wet this morning that I did burn piles. It was rain uh, drizzling. I used more nails this time. That's the only real difference because the hide had already been softened. It had been really stretched out a lot. The edges are really wavy. The other hides really pulled off the nails a lot. So I used probably three times as many nails on this, and uh, we'll see how it goes, but it doesn't really matter. It'll, it'll turn out either way. I'm just kind of wringing out some of the excess water here. Um, a lot of the time I would actually put this on the beam and scrape over the flesh side, but I'm just not convinced I need to do that with this one. So I'm just going to give it a good hard hand wringing. And then there's a tool I'm going to use that will help probably get some more of this out. Okay, this needs to be uh, very clean, so I'm just gonna rinse it off, make sure it's nice and clean. And I want these tools to be very clean. Uh, if there's Again, if there's any grit on them, they could kind of mess things up. This is definitely dirty and gritty, so I wanna get that nice and clean. Okay, so again, this is one of the uh, two major methods that I tend to use on uh, medium-sized hides. So, you know, things like the sheep here or, or deer or goat or something like that. For goat, this is the main uh, method that I use. You can soften goat the way that I softened those sheep hides, but they often don't turn out awesome because they just want to be smoother 
and not as fluffy or not as supple well you can just you know try it and find out but that's my experience so we have two different tools that are kind of similar i tend to call this one a uh, a slicker and this one a slicking iron or uh, i don't know what do i call that i can't remember maybe that's what i call it <laughs> I only use this on the flush side because it's, you know, not super sharp, but it's a little bit sharp. You can, yeah, you kind of hear it, you know, that would damage the grain. So I don't, I don't want to use it on the grain side. This one is used only on the grain. It has a radius here that's about a quarter inch or so, nice and smooth. And I'm going to check that, you know, every time I use this in case it's been banging around and gets scratched or something, I'm going to check that. Cause again, if it's chipped or something, it might damage the grain. So we're on the flush side here. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna start pushing this hide out and stretching it out this way. And we're gonna to try to make it uh, flatter, but we're also, as you can see, moving a little bit of water um, out of the hide, out to these edges here. We'll get rid of a little bit of that water maybe. Now I'm being pretty careful not to like scrape hard over these wrinkles here. You'll see that I'm kind of chasing the wrinkles out. Come at it from different angles and try to work it out and smooth it out. Okay, you get the idea, right? Let's do fast motion time lapse. So you can really see how I've chased a lot of water out here to these edges and we, we're gonna get to get rid of that. So again, this is kind of like doing the same thing as if I threw it on the beam and went over the flush side. And since I have to do this anyway, I just thought, well, let's skip a step and kill two birds with one stone. All right, I need to cut this off. That's actually a nipple, a sheep nipple. I don't want that. Okay, so lots of liquid coming out here. That's good. Okay, I've gone over the whole hide. Um, I've done three things. So notice that the hide is all stretched out now. It's bigger. It's, um, you know, from all that shrinking in, it's just pushed out. It's also flatter. Um, look at how few wrinkles there are relative to like how it was before, how some of those other hides are. And we're not done with that process, but this kind of got a good start, right? And we pushed out some water. So we got rid of some excess water and this will dry a little bit uh, quicker. We don't want it to dry really fast. We'll talk about that shortly, but uh, I don't want it to dry super slow either. This is how this works. We are going to put oil on the flush side and then we're gonna turn it over and slap it on this board and use the oil as a paste to kind of stick it to the board and it'll stay mostly flat as it dries or it should. That's the idea, it usually seems to work. Okay, the oils we wanna use for this are either Dubbin, which is a 50-50 mix of tallow and a, an oil that's liquid at room temperature. So these are two very different things, right? So if you have olive oil or neat's foot oil, it's like real liquid at room temperature and tallow is very hard at room temperature. And so you're kind of like mixing the two together to soften up the tallow and it makes a paste that you can actually, you know, work with because tallow is too hard. Like if you try to smear it on here, even if it's hot and warm, it's probably gonna cool instantly on this wet skin and just be too hard. Tallows are like sheep fat, goat fat, deer fat, and cow fat are perfect examples of tallows. They're like really hard and heavy at room temperature. Now this is actually probably lard. It could be Dubbin uh, that I mixed up at some point, but I can't, you know, whatever is written on this lid is unreadable now. But when I stick my fingers in here, it's like a soft pasty uh, consistency. And I'm pretty sure this is lard. Now I have used lard before. You don't hear about using lard very much in traditional uh, tanning literature and stuff like that. I don't know why, maybe they just ate all the lard, <laughs> but it seems to work okay. And it is kind of already a little bit like Dubbin, although it's probably a little bit um, softer uh, than Dubbin. I'm gonna put like a, a pretty liberal coat on here. Like I wanna see something like that, right? Because I need enough of it to, to actually stick it to the board. So you're using this oil not only to lubricate the skin, 
fiber because uh, some of it's going to soak in, especially the liquid portion, right? And that's true even with the lard. Like when you get a fat, like a vegetable fat or an animal fat, it's not one fatty acid. It's a mixture of fatty acids. Um, you know, unless like it's been fractionated industrially or something, you're getting different fatty acids mixed together. So if you mix um, tallow and neatsfoot oil together, likely the more liquid portion of that is going to absorb a little bit more into the skin than the uh, tallow portion. Okay, so I'm going to just do this and I'll see you on the other end when this is all fatted up. Okay, so I've gone over the whole hide. As you can see, it's really gone liquid. Like when I put it on, it was white like this. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is lard. Again, I've used it before and it seemed to work. Um, I'm a little concerned that uh, too much of this will soak in and over oil the skin, but I guess we'll find out. Lard is nice because it's really readily available. Like you can go to any grocery store pretty much and buy lard a block of this stuff and it's not as easy to find tallow like if you go to your butcher a real butcher that actually cuts up animals like they might just give you some pieces of tallow okay so i'm using this plastic board which is uh just an old chunk of plastic from like the dividers in a bathroom you know like a bathroom stall i kind of like this right now because it doesn't absorb any moisture and it's going to cause the hide to dry slowly so as i said before in a previous video when you're drying leather, typically, like the rule of thumb is you want to dry it slowly. And if I put this on plywood, it would dry a little bit faster because the plywood would be taking up some uh, moisture. And it's supposed to be really warm. It's a little humid right now, but I think that's going to clear up by tomorrow. The other thing is that if you use plywood, it has to be really smooth if your skins are thin. So if I was using plywood and it had any kind of like rough grain that you could feel, when I slick this out, it'll actually show up and it'll show up and it'll dry like that and those patterns uh, might remain in the leather. So you don't want to use uh, like a rough surface. Now, if it was a cattle hide, like when we do our cattle hide, I could put that on a rough piece of plywood, no problem, because it's so thick, it's not going to show any of those impressions, uh, you know, through the hide. Think of it like a, a gravestone rubbing, right? Or rubbing, where you put the piece of paper down and then you rub it sideways with a pencil and it picks up the, uh, you know, the impression. It's just like that. Okay, so on this side, we're going to put just a, a light coating. I'm pretty much going to do this as thin as I can. Uh, well, not quite, because I just don't want to take the time. But yeah, I want this pretty thin. It's okay if there's extra though, because I'm gonna push a lot of it off with the slicker. It's just a matter of like, I don't wanna waste it. And Okay, so I'll see you on the other side of this process. Okay, so now we're gonna use our very smooth radius piece of slate here. This could be glass. Uh, you could make it out of like an old roofing slate. Uh, grind it on the sidewalk until it's pretty round and then just use finer and finer sandpaper to get it smoothed off. Uh, they aren't really hard to make. Now this tool, when I use it on the flush side, because it has a lot of grip, you know, there's some friction because it's a little sharper, uh, thinner edge, it can really grip the hide and it's much more effective at stretching the hide out. And that's one of the reasons I like to do that first on the flush side before I, you know, do this whole pacing process. Plus I want it reasonably flat, like, you know, it's close to what, what we want already because I did that. When you use this tool, you don't want to see uh, big marks in the edge. You need to roll these off, like keep tuning them and rolling them off until you're not seeing like uh, indentations, you know. Okay, so we're going to start in the middle and we're just going to push out. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. Do we? What's going on here? Oh, it's a scar. There's a scar there. I felt it bumping. I thought there was something underneath the hide. So if there's anything underneath this hide, even something pretty small, uh, we're going to feel it and it's going to leave a bump. Pay attention to that and... Uh, if you feel something, get under there and take it out. It's important to understand that those wrinkles went somewhere. The animal's not flat. Hides are not flat, the animal's not flat. The hide wraps around the animal in all kinds of different places. 
And when you stretch it out, I mean, it's kind of like its natural shape, if it's really stretched out, is wavy on the edges and a little poofy in the center. So when we get this completely flattened out, we're kind of compromising, right? I mean, those wrinkles went somewhere and they still exist. Like those tensions or, uh, you know, we're basically pushing the hide together in parts and or stretching it in other parts to make it flat. So, you know, that stuff can cause problems later. The fewest problems are going to be here in the center of the hide where it's more uniform, less wavy. You know, the edges are definitely the most wavy. So if I cut things out and make it, like say I made like a panel for uh, a laptop bag or something like that, then this area of the skin is more likely to stay in place. Whereas if I use these outside edges a lot, you know, as the item is used, it might uh, kind of stretch out of shape a little bit. And that's one reason when you're making uh, clothing and stuff to use smaller panels and not use gigantic uh, pieces of hide because they're more likely to stay in place. Okay, so we need this oil on the hide to lubricate the grain you can see what's going on here and that's one of the functions of the oil here on the grain side and you can see i'm taking quite a bit of it off and just uh tossing it what i'm trying to say is i just want to get as much of this oil off of here and leave a very thin coat so i'm going to take off probably half or more of it so here's a good example. I have this, uh, you know, wavy edge. This is a real thin part of the hide. And I'm basically making these little folds and wrinkles here by pushing it flat. So it's not like, you know, it's a perfect system where you're gonna get this all both flat and uh, in any kind of natural even shape with uh, natural, naturally even tensions because that's just not, that's not reality. But in the end, it works, you know. I mean, that's the important thing. This is how you do this, and it, and it works. Just expect when you're working with this part of the hide, even when it's all finished and softened, you're probably able to pull on it, especially if it's wet, and it's going to, like, stretch out and not be flat anymore. Fortunately, again, that's, like, the least valuable, least useful parts of the hide. I wouldn't say they're waste, but they have limited uh, uses. Now, if I had endless amounts of uh, skin, say if I like had just a really endless supply of free sheep hides like this and I wanted to tan them, I might think about rounding them off to the degree where all of this is cut off, you know, down here at the rumps where it's really thin and just kind of like make a big rectangle out of the hide and, you know, not waste my time scraping and tanning and softening and all that um, on parts of the hide that aren't really that useful and I'm not going to use that much. Okay, so you might see here I have a real problem area. I'm going to try to like compromise by putting some of the wrinkles over like stretched out over this whole area instead of having them all in one spot. Same thing with the neck here. I have like a lot of wrinkles here. See if we can push some of those out and again, kind of like, kind of spread them out so that they're not all in one clump. Okay, that's looking good. Um, again, I don't want an extra fat on here, so I'm actually going to get like a rag or something wipe some of this fat off, and then we're gonna smooth it out as smooth as we can get it. And all I wanna do is just take off some of this excess oil. Because, you know, there's already oil in the skin from when we did the egg yolk, and uh, this is leaving some lint, I don't want that. What was I saying? Yeah, so, you know, it already went through this egg yolk emulsion, egg yolk and oil emulsion, which I would not do with this kind of leather normally at all. It would come straight out of the tan and go into this process right here, after any reflushing and scudding that it needed. Okay, we have one final step. Oh wait here, this is really greasy. If you're using this all day, you would wanna handle you know, more like this. Final step is we need to go over this whole thing and take out every mark. So there, there's like a mark there that I left from some tool or something. We're gonna take that out as much as possible. You can see when I'm using this, in spite of having these edges round, I'm still leaving like a little line right there. None of that, okay? So we wanna like go very gently. If I, if I touch it, look at that, see? 
if I just touch it with the corner there, it's leaving these little marks. None of that, all that comes out. So it's okay to push on it hard to get something out, but then you're gonna leave little marks here. So come back and just kinda smooth those out. Now, depending on how we soften it, some of those may not matter, but it's just a good habit and good practice to uh, get this as smooth and nice as you can. You can see like if I take this, it's stuck down there pretty good. Like it's pasted down pretty good. One last talking point here. So this hide has wrinkles in it and I can see the wrinkles, they're still there. We didn't get rid of them with the slicker. Like if this, if anything's gonna get rid of them, it's gonna be the slicker and they're not gone. I can see wrinkles all over in here. Lots of them at the neck, which tends to be really wrinkly on these sheep and those aren't coming out and they're never gonna come out. Now certain hides, like uh, you know, some parts of a cattle hide, a lot of goat hides have a much flatter, less wrinkly grain. And that's because the fiber structure underneath is much denser and tighter. And you know, the, the fact that the fiber structure of this or a buffalo hide or a deer hide or any other of these more like loose uh, fibered hides is so loose under there has something to do with why these uh, wrinkles form. So it doesn't matter like how much I go over this trying to get rid of those wrinkles, they're not coming all the way out. And that's just how it is. Uh, so we're gonna have a couple different options for softening this hide. I mean, we could put it through a full softening thing, you know, on the cable and all of that stuff. But if I was doing that, I wouldn't go through this process. It's pretty much, you know, this is a waste of time. And I don't want any heavy oils in here. I'd rather just have a lot of liquid oils and egg yolk like we did with the other hides using uh, just olive oil and egg yolks. So typically I'm gonna either roll this hide with the grain folded inward, which is gonna make this more wrinkly, like a lot more wrinkly, or we're gonna finish it by folding the hide or rolling the hide with the grain on the outside so the grain is only stretched, right? You see the difference if I fold the grain onto the grain and then roll the hide, I'm compressing the grain. I'm compressing this stuff and, and it's gonna bend and cause wrinkles in it. And if I roll it the other way, it's only gonna stretch it out more and make it more, if anything, it's gonna make it you know, more flat and, and more uniform. So we'll decide what to do with this uh, later, but before that all happens, this has to uh, dry. So two problems I wanna deal with here are, I don't want it to dry too fast. The sun is creeping over here. It's gonna be full on this hide pretty soon. Don't want that. So I need to provide some shade for this and I wanna dry it slow. So I'm gonna basically take a sheet, just a cloth and throw it over here. And what that's gonna do is it's, it's just gonna slow it down, right? It's not gonna stop it. I don't want it to dry too slow. I've actually had problems with hides molding on this piece of plastic like underneath because they dried too slow. I do not think that's gonna be a problem. One of the reasons I'm doing this today is because it's supposed to be 108 this week in the valley. So that means it's probably gonna be 105 up here in a few days. And I want this, you know, I want this uh, part of this project out of the way before that happens. And then provide some kind of shade. I might just throw shade cloth over it. I, I don't know yet, but we'll figure something out. Problem number two. Um, I just was down burning brush today and there's a sheep hide. I can see it from here right there and it was actually dragged out of a tub over here. So a bear came, uh, broke into the tub and dragged that hide out, probably chewed on a little bit. It was like, this is terrible, and uh, which I'm sure it is and left it there. It's like an old nasty, you know, sheep hide. I also saw a bear scat in the garden. So that bear's already been in the garden because I didn't plug, I didn't turn the electric fence back on after winter. So I need to protect from that too. So I'm gonna set up uh, some kind of alarm uh, so that if the bear comes here and, and smells this fat, which it probably will, and starts to get in here, I'll hear it, you know, like some kind of tin can rattling bell thing or something. So let's solve those two problems and then we'll just leave this to dry. I think one thing we can do is just throw this towel we were just using over here. And I have another one that we had rolled the uh, other hides up in before. I'll put that on here. Yeah, you can see here, it's already getting on here and it's melting this fat. I don't want any sun to get on this. I don't want any sun to be shining directly on these towels. Uh, part of what these, these towels are gonna do is they're gonna prevent wind from going across the hide. And you know, that's a, that's a big deal. 
These are gonna kind of pull some moisture away from the hide, but it's gonna have to go into here and then slowly travel through the towels and evaporate out. And that's gonna be a, a whole lot slower process than having them exposed and having like air moving across them because heat is great for drying things, but heat and air together, air movement are really uh, what you want if you wanna dry something quick. Okay. Here we go, uh, shade cloth. I mean, this is four layers of probably 80% shade cloth. No sun's getting on that thing. A uh, little bell, like a cowbell here, just tied to this fence post. So if they drag the shade cloth, that's gonna ring. A couple of weights here on the edges to make sure the uh, shade cloth doesn't blow away. And none of this is putting any pressure or touching uh, the hide in any way. So I do wanna check this in two or three days to make sure that um, it is drying and that it's not drying too slow, not molding and uh, make any adjustments. But other than that, I probably won't look at this for a couple of days. So when this is dry and the other height is dry, uh, we'll move on to finishing.